Um, so can you just tell me who you are and what your relationship is to Derek? Yeah, my name's Linda Hart and I'm Derek Evans's eldest daughter. So can tell us about what's your kind of strongest memory of your of your father and your... Oh gosh, there's so many different ones. But I suppose I suppose one of my my strongest ones are actually going out with him for um going on his kind of filming jobs when he go when he went to um the scrambles and <laughs> a lot of bike activity. Um and the other thing I, I also remembered was that he, he sometimes, well, he used to do a lot of photo photographing um, parachutists and things. And I remember going to Shobden with him and um, standing near the cross that's, that they land on and people coming down, the parachutes coming down, which was, which was really exciting, actually. So, yeah. Um, so tell us a bit more about that. You talked about him sort of hanging out on the side of planes and all those that's right well he he was he was kind of quite somebody who liked a bit of excitement in life really um, and so he used to do a lot of filming of, of the SAS um, and he used to go up in their planes and hang out the side of the plane and often wasn't even strapped in so it was a bit of a daredevil really um, and uh, he actually dropped one of his very precious cameras out of out of one of those planes one day so that was pretty awful but um, it didn't land on anybody, fortunately. So, so nobody was injured in that particular incident. But yeah, so he he was very into all the kind of exciting things that that went on. But usually, I wasn't allowed to go on those because I had to be, you know, sort of safe and things. Because actually, with him, he wouldn't have kept me particularly safe because he would just wander off and do whatever, and come back when he was ready. So you know, that's how it was. I'm afraid. <laughs> So what was your, as a child growing up, what was your kind of image of him? What was your perception of him and what he was doing? And you talked about the, the phone calls and... Yeah. And... OK, well, he was, yes, he wasn't there a lot of the time, particularly in the day, really, I suppose. So, so often, you know, when I was very young, I was in bed by the time he would come home. Um, but, you know, there was often quite a lot of phone calls uh, in the night and he would just rush off to do various things. Um, and one particular night, I remember being quite scared by this phone call. It was probably about three o'clock in the morning or something. And he rushed off and, and I knew something awful had happened. And um, I sort of, it transpired the next day that I found out that um, um, our sort of GP was, was murdered by... Um, a, a drug addict who broke into the surgery and held him at knife point and then when he didn't give him any drugs stabbed him to death so it was very sad because we knew him as well as the fact that it was a, a horrible thing to happen anyway so yeah so what about what was the general kind of um thing then when he was when he kind of coming and going a lot was, was he working away a lot was he he was worked he... mainly around the sort of midlands and uh, south wales area um he did he did go abroad to uh, to photograph kind of um he used to go to the uh, jazz festival in nice every year and he he went away and he he used to play golf so he often went to golf matches and took photographs of golfers um and he, you know, he, he liked travelling, but he didn't do too much of it because obviously he had his family and home in Hereford. So he sort of kept to that, really. But he was sort of taking lots of news film for um, HTV. Um, so he was kind of a stringer there. I think that's what they're called. So, um, you know, that's where he sort of rushed off to do little pieces of news film um, at any time of day or night, really. So. And then he'd rush the film to the station and it would go off on the train. I think, you know, it's a lot, not quite like that anymore. <laughs> but certainly in those days, it was quite primitive, really. So, yeah. So were you quite aware as a child of what your father did? And was it quite unusual to have a photographer for a father? And... I guess it was quite, quite unusual, uh, but I didn't really know quite what it meant. I mean, I, I guess it was, for me, it was much more about him taking photographs, perhaps of us quite often. Because we, you know, we'd have the Christmas photographs of us and things, so I didn't really think about the films that he took particularly. But of course, he did a lot of that. Um, 
And I suppose, you, you know, as a child, you don't really know what somebody does. You know, they're called something, you know, a doctor, a photographer, whatever. But actually, you have no clue what that really means. It just means, you know, well, it meant to us that he wasn't there very often, really. But we always had nice holidays abroad and things. So, um, you know, that we saw a lot of him then. So, you know, I suppose that made up for the time when he wasn't around kind of thing, you know. So tell us about, did he ever pass on anything to you? Did he ever give you a camera? Did he teach you how to develop a photograph? Yeah, that? yeah, I was, well, my first camera was a box camera that he gave me. And um, yeah, I, I did, didn't need too much tuition with that. So I kind of, you know, learnt how to use it and, you know, wasn't too bad at it. Um, and then he gave me his Rolleiflex, which had been uh, kind of, it had been damaged somehow as well. And he'd got it sort of, sorted out again and he did teach me how to use that um, and I loved that camera it was really nice but he he decided he wanted it back to do some other photography with so then he had it back and he gave me a new something like a Canon or something um, which was never as nice as the Rolleiflex but I do have the Rolleiflex now in my possession because I love it I don't know if it works I haven't tried it for ages um, but I do I really like it it's a really nice camera um, and I do remember that, you know, when I was quite young, going into the dark room, which was always kind of a fascinating place because, you know, it's dark, obviously. Um, but the main thing I liked was the, the fact when you develop the photographs and they appear so magically. I still think that's quite magic. But obviously you don't get to do those things now, unfortunately. But it's, it was, that was fantastic. And they'd pin up all the stills on the little line thing there. It's really nice, really, really nice. Uh, I didn't actually, no. He used to do, what he used to do was a contact sheet for me and then I could choose which ones I wanted developed. He, I never actually managed to, to do that. I don't think he liked me doing things for myself. He didn't mind helping or showing, but I don't think he'd have been trust, he would have trusted me to do that really, so, you know. Yeah, it's a shame actually, but yeah. And what was the thing he said to you about, um, what was his kind of tip about, it didn't matter what kind of camera? That's right, he did, he said that actually um, it didn't matter what kind of camera you had, anybody can take a, fo a good photograph on any camera if they've got a good eye for it. And, and I think, I believe that to be true actually, because, you know, um, I've seen some really bad photographs that people have taken with really easy point and shoot cameras and obviously phones. And, you know, I'm always quite pleased with my phone pictures. So, so I must have picked something up I think, at some point, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So tell us yeah. about the kind of the era <laughs> and the attitudes and, you know, about the culture. I think, yeah, I think obviously men at that stage were pretty sort of much, they liked being in male company, going to the football and that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, he was a great Hereford United fan as well. I'd forgotten to mention that before. Um, and he also used to have this uh, jazz evening with all these blokes that came around and they kind of drank wine together and listened to jazz, little pieces. Of, they all sort of took their own little bits of jazz to play throughout the evening and so mum and I would take food into them you know but it wasn't they didn't really want women in there at all it was like you you crept in and you crept back out and I think that's probably what was expected of women at that point they sort of tended to serve the men and and men you know thought of women in that way really but um, hopefully things have changed a bit since then When we were talking about the fact that he, you didn't think he's conscious that he was creating this archive of photographs that we'd all be talking about now, what you know, what was his main kind of activity and why was he doing it? I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I wouldn't have thought he would ever have thought about, um, you know, anybody particularly wanting to to have all those photographs afterwards. I think he enjoyed the sort of doing the exhibitions and things like that because he had a lot of. Because we've st we've got a couple of few of his you know pictures that were just on boards, um, and he he just liked doing that kind of stuff. 
he enjoyed the work so much. I don't think it wasn't, it was the actual doing of it, not what the product of it in the end. I mean, there was, there are some fantastic photographs, but I don't think he was that conscious of people thinking how brilliant they were. I think he just, you know, just loved doing the work and loved meeting people, you know, talking and, you know, just finding out about people. And, and my husband always says that he was quite charismatic and, and perhaps he was. I mean, I probably wouldn't have known what that meant at that stage. And, and perhaps he was, so perhaps he was quite charismatic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people have said that he had the real kind of, you know, the gift of the, you know, to engage people. Yeah, I, I, I believe that's true. He did, he did engage people a lot, and and you know, he, he was, he was able to get things out of people that, you know, he wanted. If he wanted a story about something, then he was able to ask the right questions and and get it because he was quite a relaxed person, um, and he always wore such weird kind of rather very overly casual clothes so people never felt um you know in awe of him in any sense whatsoever but i think most photographers are quite um relaxed but yeah certainly he was he was quite relaxed yeah so what when if he was what how would you feel like if he said to you come on linda do you want to come out with me so tell us about going out and about with him a bit more um, well, I always really liked going out with him, actually. But he, he used to meet lots and lots of people when we were out and talk incessantly to various people. And as a child, that's pretty boring, actually. You kind of get left somewhere and, you know, he'd go off and do whatever. But it was still quite exciting because, you, you know, you were actually left to do what you wanted to do. And you could go and watch what all the adults were doing and kids were doing without being kind of told what to do really which is which is always quite good as a child isn't it so so yeah um it was good fun very good fun going out with him yeah and I don't I don't ever remember my sisters coming too so that was always nice having him to myself really so yeah <laughs> so when he was at home was it very much a different kind of he was... yeah he was quite quiet at home I think he yeah he was probably exhausted actually because he worked very hard so I think most of the time he was kind of like, you know, would like sitting and watching telly and stuff and snoozing in the chair, that sort of thing, what most people do at home, you know. <laughs> so because, I mean, you know, he played golf and um, he played that most any time that he got some spare time. So he wasn't, you know, when he, he was out a lot of the time doing stuff. So when he was at home, he was probably exhausted, as I say. So, yeah. And how do you remember kind of in the later years kind of how what what his involvement was with the studio did it kind of gradually sort of pay off or? he was always um keith was always in touch with him so he always you know he would come and see him and they'd talk about work together but it was a very gradual process whereby he kind of gave up doing the photography and things um but keith always kept in touch with him and always was well, I think they were very good friends, really. I think they got on well together, and they they have very different kind of personalities. So it was it was a good match. So yes. What having sort of we spoke to you about the project and about the archive, what yeah. we're trying to achieve. What what do you see the value might be in trying to preserve this archive and get these photographs seen and get the stories behind them? What do you see the value might be in that? Well, it's a great part of sort of living history, isn't it, really? And it's it's fantastic having people that actually lived in those photographs to come and talk about it. I just think that's amazing. It's a lovely idea and I, you know, I just, I hope it continues and you get funding for it again because these things are, are, are really important. Otherwise, the stories are lost, you know, and, you know, it, it, it is just such a lovely way of doing it, really. What do you think Derek would make of all of it? Um, <laughs> I'm not really quite sure about that, really, because he, he was uh, he was quite a sort of, on some levels, quite a private person. So I'm not sure what he'd think, but I think I think he'd be happy that his photographs were being used in some useful sense and some historical sense so yeah I think he'd probably probably be okay with it yeah